This is a 2023 Opus Light in the gray. And this is a quick review, an exit review, if you will. We're gonna be getting rid of it tomorrow. We took it out to Western Colorado and Utah for about two weeks. Took it on some pretty hardcore trails. And I gotta say, as for an off-road trailer, it handled amazingly. Its track is about a foot and a half from the Forerunner. And uh, shocks and uh, radius and all that stuff for getting towed is great. But that's about where it stops. You can hear the oxygen sensor going off. Apparently you need to turn that off before you uh, shut her down and close it up because it's going to beep. For starters, it leaks. It leaks in all of the cabinets. I adjusted every one of these doors throughout the whole trailer to try to solve that problem and I got nothing. There's little adjustments inside here that can be adjusted, but as you can see, beep, 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 you have gaps, man. And this thing is on there. This is tightened as much as you really want to tighten it before you start stressing on the rivets that are holding these brackets on. It leaks in the back, it leaks in the front, it leaks. Water in the cushions, water in the mattress that is on the top. In this position, obviously, the mattress is underneath connected to this right now. When that opens up, my mattress was wet at the head, which is now on that end. When I got this, this was up on this hole on the top and it stuck up about this tall, which is taller than where the bed comes to rest. The hose that came with it was about four feet long for some reason and was already completely worn and cracked and had to be replaced with something shorter and it all turned out. Another bug knot feature See if I can get this camera going in the right direction. Is that beeping bothering you? Because it's bothering me. If you see the brake lines coming through, you can see a loop hanging down. It's on the skid part of the frame. And they got a nice beefy frame on this thing. As you can see, there's an extra kind of I-beam on the bottom or a upside down T-beam. But the Yahoo is that put this together. Another issue is uh, easily fixable, but having D shackles, I don't think they're quite bull shackles, I think they call them uh, D rings or whatever. This does not like trail. When I was on trail, I tied them together so if they went on screw, something. You know, I'd rather a carabiner or a hard carabiner like this with a twist would have been a better option. And then that's what it connects to with here, which is just a pin and whatnot. So to replace this would be difficult. The uh, 750 Extreme Off-Road Air Arc, that thing is ridiculous. It's perfect. I don't know why it has to be in silver like a marine one, but whatever. I ended up painting the frame on this Opus Light 23 because it was came in silver, which is ridiculous. Seeing the rest of it's black and gray. Tires held up well. I mean, they're Chinese tires. They are what they are. Um, let's take a look at the... Uh, I wouldn't call them chintzy. They were pretty uh, rugged as far as jack stands go. You know, you just pull this out, this drops down. It's 
got the bolt in the middle that you go up and down with. Those were fine. I didn't have a problem with those at all. We tore off the uh, mud flaps a couple of times because they hang down pretty low and they are pretty close. I mean, I get it, the design of it all. But if you need to back up with a trailer and you're on trail and there's a ledge behind you or a rock, it'll snap right off and make a horrific sound. Another negative is going to be this whole stove, which we'll get out and look at it. But the thing is, with the stove and sink inside there, every time you open it or unopen it or close it, every time you open it and close it, you have to hook up your hoses. You got to string them out underneath this door while it's open to hook it up. It's a pain in the ass. So what we did was used our Jetboil Genesis 99% of the time. Uh, nothing too crazy back here. It does come with Zamp, solar, pre-wired, which is proprietary like an Apple charger from years back. So you either have to get something to rectify that or you're gonna have to go zamp and zamp if you've looked it up online is ridiculously overpriced so we went with Renogy and a couple of wires to correct that problem all right let's crack this thing open and complain more so we're gonna pop this up real quick oh that's relative That's not supposed to stick like that. That front guard, I don't know if it moved in in our travels or it just moved around a little bit. But the clip that actually holds the same thing here actually holds that down. Somehow is uh, off by a half inch, so it kind of sits on that weird now. All right, so we got her open. We got the valve shut. We got the beep in the stop. Now we're going to start pumping it up. So now we'll hit go. Let's see what happens. You have to help it out. So what I did there was take off one of these that's on the propane. It's shorter than these because we actually lost the one in the first day going down trail. One of these that hangs on the empty propane, or on the, not the empty propane, but the uh, clasp that holds it down, this bottom part down, that came right off. So you might want to. All right, so we got her up, opened up this door this door so we have uh, buttons on the back velcro on the other side these go on here clip 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 right you look at the camper now obviously it's not tied down you can see how it's stretched to there on the top you see the stretch marks there's two straps that come off the back that pull the back tauntish. But this door, after opening this and closing it and doing it about, oh, what do you think, Liz? How many times we? Seven or eight? A solid 20 times. And it still hasn't loosened, which might be a feature, not a flaw. Uh, basically, it's a hazard. You know, you get an old couple or a young kid in here and something's going on and needs to get out. It's not easy to get out. Uh, the bottom here. Let's take a look here. Actually, Velcro's to the step. All right. So you have a gap there no matter what you do. You're going to have gaps coming in on either side. 
I'd spend time and set this all up, but frankly, I don't want to. Now, it's got it where you can open it up from the bottom, but you're never going to be able to get it closed again. So you're always going to be stepping over this at an angle. The screen, half screen, Velcros to the door, that Velcros to the step. You can't have the door all the way open with the screen on there, or the screen will still be in this position. So you need to step over this to get out. Which means you better have your wits when you're trying to get out in the middle of the night. And either you gotta take that midnight pee, or there's a bee, or a bear, or a cat. Yeah, or it's on fire. You come tripping right out of this thing. The legs look adjustable on the bottom, but they're not. So any level ground, any unlevel ground, any ground at all, that's where they are. Sure, this comes down further and goes up a little further, but and as you can see some delamination here. This is basic trailer house floor vinyl. But these gaps in the seal allow water in and that's where it goes. Water is fine in a camper if it's made out of metal, but, well, made out of aluminum anyway. But this is all wooden here. All these cabinets, it's all wood. Not real wood, obviously it's press board. Now we take a look. This all does come down now. It's got a nice strap that hooks underneath that will hold this down. Get a little wind and a little water. That's the inside of the camper. Let's see if we can get some light. See inside? The other side has it a little worse. There's even a bigger gap. Now they give you some pads to Velcro right here that kind of just sit in here and once this is all taut yeah but you get somewhere where uh you know it's 20 mile an hour is out in the middle of the desert and you get blowing sand in there and quite a bit here is a nice giant gap where they also give you a pad that sticks on there that just kind of sits here so from this to this is a pad that just sits in here. Well, they gave you this to hold that down a little bit, but that's really not pulling on this part anymore. My biggest gripe, it's gonna have to be the fact that it's far, far too tall. I believe it's uh, 10 feet. So the size of a basketball goal. It's a lot of wind. It's a sail. This is pumped up above what it's supposed to be at. Granted, I don't have the stabilizers down right now, but that wasn't the trailer moving when I'm pulling on that. That's just the top. Yeah, it's got a couple of straps that'll hold on there, but we'll put it in a little video right here. Sorry about the audio quality on that, but this will bend right in half. Just like that. 
when you get a good wind. And that turns into a sail. You can tighten it down as much as you want. This end just flappity flaps. This whole thing just lifts right up and balloons up, fills everything with air. Again, you can tighten these uh, clips down and straps, but the wind will just pull them right to the end in no time. Even the side that's Velcroed. So the end of this, you can see the square there in the middle and on the end. It's Velcroed on there, but it still pulled this strap right to its end. So no matter how much you tighten it, it's a high profile <laughs> tent on wheels. This is the mattress. This isn't torn. This isn't ripped. This is this is how it is. This obviously comes over. A few straps. Strap there. Tightens it up. But again, a little bit of wind, a little bit of water. Your mattress is right on the other side of this fabric. It's got a fun little uh, hood which only amplifies the wind. So if you were to nose this into the wind, you know, because when you camp, you have options on BLM land like we have. You can nose into the wind, or you can either play the sun or the wind, and that just lifts right up. All your drawers are pretty much two-handed operations. Most campers like this will have a bar going from that blue to blue. So if I have something in my hand, like whatever I want to put in the fridge, oh man, all of your buttons are outside in a door. Say you need to pump it up at night, right before you go to bed like we did every time, because otherwise it collapses, because there's a, probably a small leak somewhere in here. In order to hit that button to top her off before you go to bed, you got to go outside. Want to turn the lights off? You got to go outside. You want to turn your sockets off on the inside to save your battery for the night? Outside. These are just a few of the things of why, but mainly, if you're trying to get a camper where you want to get away from your ground tent, all this is is a tent on wheels. Handles great off-road as a trailer. Unless you're in a place where it never rains, never gets above five mile an hour winds, you might want to take a look at something else. Now I'd like to show you these latches here. So these are adjustable. You can tighten these down with a wrench. You can have that wherever you need it. But it only came with one nut. As you can see, both of these are all over the place from bouncing down the trail. The seal on this one would probably work if these worked better. And as you can see inside, the Red Sands of Utah, and a little bit, I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up necessarily in the linoleum that's down there, but there's a little bit of ripple in there. And it's just a touch wet still. And this is two and a half weeks. I mean, it was shut up. I mean, I can't, you know, get around not keeping it shut. In my lifestyle, I can't uh, sit around and let it air out every single time. So there's that. So this guy pulls out. Not quite all the way though. Why? Unless this is considered all the way, I'm not sure. Doesn't feels like it should come out. Where? So the water hose. Every time you open and close this. Now one good one good thing here, guys. It does have a light. But like the water hose, you have to plug it in. So you get it all out. Remember underneath here this is where the water hooks up. So I have to hook up my hose to here and then up underneath. 
Also up underneath is the gas hose, which is tucked away in there. We'll just imagine the same thing as the water. You have to pull that hose out, move this door, and two-hand it on the ground with your knees, and hook it up. Turn on your propane. There's a valve on that stem there, or on that uh, coupling there. Remember to open that one. And that just hangs down, and you got your hoses just kind of hanging down. And you gotta remember to disconnect everything before you close it. We use the stove a total of twice. As you can see, it's quite beat up from the trail. These burners, pretty hardcore steel on their uh, di uh, cast iron there. You gotta keep the white things on there. You probably saw it in other videos. Why is that white stuff in there? Well, that keeps all the separate components together. Not really sure if it's standard, but I don't want to do a puzzle every time I have to cook. It's a decent sized stove. You got a little extra space there. It does come with a pole that keeps all this together. So. All right, so this is the back side of the fridge. And we're keeping a few things in here. Again, you need two hands to open this. You can kind of tweak that side and kind of tweak that side. And that all pulls out. Yeah. So I'm not really sure why they made it two or one with a space in the middle here. And it's got a little riser. I mean, I get it that it has to go over the bracket, but they could have made two separate. Or just not had one at all. Didn't really need a drawer on this side. I think uh, shelving would have done a little bit better of a job over here. Because you really don't need to pull out to reach in. Total of what, a foot? Not even? Someone could tell me what this flap is for. I couldn't figure it out. Now we're an off-road trailer. It's not for campgrounds. It's not for the looking at the back of other RVs 12 feet apart. It's for BLM land out in the middle of nowhere for a few days. You're not gonna find level ground all the time. Stabilizers aren't meant to hold the trailer up. Hence the uh, two by fours in the little spot there. You do the best you can, but sometimes that's just how it is, especially when you need to play the wind or the sun. The one that needs to stay open doesn't stay open. The fridge in the drawer next to it seemed to lock just fine. This one does not, did not, I'm not really sure. I didn't take it in to wait six months to figure out whether or not, or three months or two weeks or whatever it takes to get it sorted. So there you go. This is the exhaust for the battery. On trail, this will allow dust into that cabin on the other side. This is the exhaust for the refrigerator. It's been blown out, but as you can see around it and inside of it, it allows plenty of trail dust to come in. On the inside is a filtered intake. That white circular thing on the wall, that allows a lot of dust to come in, which has a hood similar to the other ones on the very front of the trailer. Every time we stopped, when we got off the trail, we had to blow all this out. Now it hasn't happened to me, but I could see it happening. If this doesn't get shut properly, and it's open a little bit, 
This gets closed. This opens up on trail. You try to open it, the whole thing here, and it'll get stuck, which means you need to go inside, reach in there, and close it. Not a huge fan of the drawers because when you get off trail again, everything is everywhere inside of here. We've had uh, our tongs, which laid in here fine, got stuck and we had to snap it to get it open. Another good thing is it's super roomy. Now we don't have it set up because we're actually cleaning it up to sell but it's quite cavernous. That might work against it. Seeing it's a 10 foot tall tent.